Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shah, Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shah. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Kakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly call Jesus Christ. Now, when you go into the kingdom of heaven, Yahweh Shah, He called the kingdom of heaven the Israelites. You see, and a lot of these Christians, they gaslight the situation. And the kingdom of heaven was always ruled by the Israelites. The kingdom of heaven was talked about in Deuteronomy. It was talked about in Leviticus. It was talked about in uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah. See, the kingdom of heaven has always been talked about. And for some reason these people gaslight the scriptures. When you go into Acts, what was the apostles asking for? You see, because they thinking that just because these people was in Jerusalem that this kingdom of heaven meant something different. But see, who took over Jerusalem when the uh, Persians fell? See, the Persian Darius, he fell to the Grecians. You go into the Book of Maccabees and history in general. The Persians fell to the Greeks. And you go into the Book of Daniel. It talked about that he goat that took over the uh, kingdom of the world. And so let's go into. Um, Matthew and look at this kingdom of heaven and look at the context on how he the the not the context I would say the order on how Yahweh shall put it verse 5 he said these 12 Yahweh shall sent forth and commanded them saying go not into the way of the Gentiles and to any city of the Samaritans enter ye not see don't go to these Gentiles because they ain't got nothing to do with them but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, it wasn't about the Gentile. Because if he if he telling them not to go to these people, that means they don't got nothing to do with them. If it has something to do with them, why wouldn't he go to them and tell them? He could go still, could have went to them and say, he could have told them, oh, when you go to talk to the Gentile, tell the Gentile that right now we're focusing on the house of Israel. We're going to come and come to y'all later on. We're going to come to y'all in a different period of time. See, he didn't say all of that. He said, go not into the way of the Gentile and just go for the lost sheep of the house of Israel because this is the kingdom that is at hand. And this is why when you go into Luke, Let's see, Luke um, is 17 and 21, I think. Yeah, 17 and 21. He tell them straight up. He said, neither shall, well, let's get, because the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is the same thing. Verse 20, to get trying to get some of the context, he said, when, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh, not with observation. Neither shall they say, here, look, look here or look there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You Israelites is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom that's going to have the power. See, because that kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God, this is not some different kingdom. And see, the kingdom uh, that's ruling is not some different kingdom than the di kingdom of God. God is still uh, in the rulership, but this is the time of the Gentile. Let's go to 21. See, this is the, what the kingdom is all about. There's Luke 21 and 24. It says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captives into all land, and Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. 
until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See, the time of the Gentiles to rule the kingdom of the world. You see, because when you go into uh, Daniel chapter 4, okay, 17, the Lord gave a specific situation. He said, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the man by the word of the Holy One and to the intent that the living may know. See, people that's living on the earth. That the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. See, this is the, the kingdom is talking about who is in rulership. It says, and give it, it to whoever he will, and set it up, set up over it the basis of men. So the, the kingdom of the world is have a ruling class. Lord, the Lord deals with, with order, he deals with hierarchy. And he have a ruling class, and that ruling class has a, a, a people that's going to be ruling. Everybody can't rule the world. Everybody can't be the leader or the king, you see. And so this is what it's talking about when it's saying the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And what were the disciples asking Yahweh when he was ascending back to heaven? They say, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, the kingdom was, was given to Elam. The kingdom was given to the Hamites. The kingdom was given to the Edomites. See, the basis of men, men, the Gentiles who was under the Israelites. But he's saying, I'm coming to bring the kingdom to Israel. And don't go to these other Gentiles because, I mean, these Gentiles, because they already got the kingdom right now. See, the Romans is ruling. Why are you going to go to them and they got the kingdom? The kingdom that he's coming to establish is the kingdom of the Israelites. And see, this is what the Christian church lied about. See, they're telling all kind of lies, trying to make like this kingdom is some mysterious place, mysterious uh, castle that's going to fall from the sky. You see, and that people are going to either go to heaven or hell, and in, in, in heaven you're going to be in the kingdom. This kingdom got its own uh, government up in heaven, and everybody going to go up there, and the earth is going to be destroyed and all this crap. This is the crap that they come out with, man, that don't make no sense. And see, the Lord had had a kingdom that he's been preaching about since Deuteronomy and since uh, what you call it, um, since Genesis. Now Zechariah right, got one of the verses I've been looking for. Let's see, this is the kingdom of heaven right here. Verse 9, chapter 14. It says, The Lord shall be king over all the earth. This is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord is the kingdom. It's going to be the king. See, in that day shall there be one Lord and his name shall be one, see? Then it says, uh, and men shall dwell in it, in, in his kingdom, and he the, the king over the, over the earth. And there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So his king, he gonna be king, and he gonna be in Jerusalem, okay? What's going to happen to the Gentiles? Verse 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. So he said, I'm not coming. Don't go to the Gentiles and the heathens because they still got a judgment coming to them. They got to serve out their judgment in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Then when you get to 16, it tells you what, what they're gonna what they gonna be doing when that kingdom start and the, God is the king over the earth and he is the one that's um what you call it uh ruling in Jerusalem and he done taught to take the wealth from the heathen, it tells you the process of how he's gonna take the wealth. And what they're going to be doing while he's taking the wealth of the heathen. Verse 16. 
and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nation that came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. So the king going to be in the kingdom of heaven where he's the king over the whole earth and it's going to be utterly peace in Jerusalem where he's ruling out of. And it says, the Lord of hosts and to keep the feast of the tabernacle. So they're going to have to come, the other heathens who are not Israelites, they're going to have to come and worship the king from year to year and, 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 and uh, come to the feast of tabernacle. Verse 17, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not come of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So he's going to punish them who don't come. The ones that they're supposed to come, he's going to punish their behind for not coming. This is what the kingdom of heaven is looking like. This is the kingdom of heaven. See, and this crap that they pushing is a lie. Let's go into Jeremiah. I mean, Isaiah, Salakia. <clears throat> Isaiah, I want the 16... Okay, from 10 to 12, it tells it says, it says, the sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their king shall minister unto serve you. That's what minister means, serve unto you. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I shall have mercy on thee. Therefore your gates shall be openly, continuously, see, because it's going to be total peace. Ain't going to be no uh them fighting and coming against the Israelites. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. So the kingdom of heaven is going to be where they bringing the forces of the gold and the silver and the uh, a power, whatever precious things to the king and that their kings might be brought for a nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Okay, so this is exactly what um the Jack Zachariah was talking about. It's no different. Kingdom of heaven looks the same. Then you get to Isaiah 61. Now we talked about it in the 60. In 61, it's going to show how the kingdom of heaven is organized. Verse starting in verse 4, it says, And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. So now it's the old wastes. The old Jerusalem is going to be set up. The old generation that was in Jerusalem, they're going to be set up, which is the Zion. This is what it says in verse 3 to a point unto them that mourn in Zion. The kingdom is going to be a Pointed to them. Those waste cities is going to be repaired and appointed to them. It says, and strangers, meaning non Israelites, shall feed your flocks, and the sons of Elan shall be your plowmen and your vine dresser. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of, of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in your glory shall ye boast yourself. So the kingdom of heaven is thoroughly explained through the prophets uh, Isaiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah uh, talks about what in 30 and 16 that all of the other nations are going to go into captivity, every one of them. Okay. Uh, he's going to uh, send forth forth. forth hunters to go hunt them down, the ones that's remaining, see, and so he, they can put them in submission. Uh, what else we got in, um, what is it, Ezekiel talks about the same thing, that they're going to be bringing um, them to serve. Well, Ezekiel 39, I think, 39. It's called um, All the Heathen. Um, it 
talks about verse 14. That's what I want. It says, and they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land of various with the passengers, those that remain upon the face of the earth. So when the kingdom of heaven starts, it's going to be people, continuous uh, employment of people that remain on the earth. The Gentiles are going to be cleaning up the earth. See, Israelites not going to be doing all this. It's going to be a continual work for these people that came against Jerusalem. This is what the kingdom of heaven is talking about. That's why in Revelation, the Havashah, he told them straight up, this is the faith that we was having from the Genesis all the way to now. With Genesis 27, uh, when he promised Jacob to rule over all nations. In verse 10, it said, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. See, this is what the kingdom of heaven is all about. And these people trying to gaslight the situation and make up an imaginary uh, group or imaginary philosophy, some religion, see, which had nothing to do with it. It was all about the Israelites. I'm going to end with Jeremiah, uh, Deuteronomy 30. And one tell you the whole thing in that one verse says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, you shall call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord have your God have driven you. So this is what is gonna be happening. Okay. It's gonna be the Lord is gonna call to mind. All of the things that was going on, what the whole situation is all about, the blessing and the curses that's happening to the Israelites. Verse, uh, verse 3, it says, Then, that then the Lord your God will turn your captivity, take you out of slavery, and have compassion upon you, and will return and gather you from all the nations, whether the Lord your God has scattered you. Okay, so he's going to gather them and take them with. Verse 5. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed. And you shall possess it and he will do you good and multiply you above your father. This is the kingdom of heaven that's been talked about from the law all the way to Revelation. Let's get it. 5 and 10, let, the, let it be spoken. It says, And he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. When we go to Jerusalem, we're going to reign on the earth as kings and priests and take the riches of the Gentiles who came against us and had us in slavery, had us in captivity. See, was plotting against us, uh, making us build up their kingdom. You see? Uh, pushing the curses on us. And so this is what the kingdom of heaven is all about. And I'm going to leave it there. All praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shav, Hashem, and Kapadash, the ones to the elders pushing the truth, peace to the elect worldwide, to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the sinners of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.